Over the last few years, the indie retro aesthetic has finally begun to evolve. For the longest time, anything you might place into that category was either going to be modeled off of 8-bit or 16-bit consoles. But as we move further and further away from later console generations and slightly newer technologies, we're getting a whole new set of aesthetics, and Devil Daggers is the perfect example of that. Visually speaking, Devil Daggers is basically Quake, but thankfully it's not just a Quake clone, an attempt to cash in on nostalgia. Instead, it takes the Pac-Man CEDX approach, almost literally choosing to become a sort of timed leaderboard race. While there's no timer counting down forcing you to halt its progress, as you progress further and further into a run, more and more enemies spawn, things become more hectic, and the enemies become harder individually. You're given two weapons to deal with them, a shotgun on left click and a machine gun on right click. The weaponry of the first person shooter boiled down to its absolute classic essentials. And then, it's time to find out how long you can last. The game plays in stages. As you ramp up your skills and last longer and longer, you'll find that you're just getting it down. You'll think that you can handle anything the game can throw at you. And then it finds some new monster, some new twist to throw into the mix, making you rethink how you play the game entirely whenever that new monster is involved. You'll also slowly develop new tactics and ways to play as you get better and better, fundamentally changing each individual playthrough. The usual problem with a lot of these leaderboard-centric games is that they rely on the fact that you have to have a certain number of friends that play the one specific game. That works great for games that are basically universal like the first Geometry Wars was, but once you get a bit more obscure, you start to have some issues finding people to compete with. But Devil Daggers deals with the problem in a really smart way. Not only can you see the scores of the top 100 players and watch their replays, but you can also watch the replays of the people right around where your time is on the leaderboards, which helps to make your direct competitors feel more like actual people instead of just numbers on a screen. And it makes it much more enjoyable to play for score and to constantly rise up the ranks. You always have a new goal to shoot for that isn't something entirely unattainable, like the people near the top are managing, the people playing at a level far beyond any newcomer. Devil Daggers manages to be the rare leaderboard-based game that is actually fun regardless of whether or not you have people to compete with. Thanks to both the universality of the replays and the easy-to-understand scoring system that is the length of time you were able to survive. Add to that the fact that its hectic nature and easy-to-grasp, tough-to-master gameplay make it a whole lot of fun to play, as well as the constant gameplay updates that it continues to receive. There was even one released right in the midst of me making this review. It all adds up to make Devil Daggers a fantastic game for anyone who's a fan of retro shooters and worth far more than its $5 asking price. Every Friday, I look at a game that was either ignored when it came out or has been forgotten since. Games that people have missed. If you like that idea, be sure to subscribe so you can see the latest videos. If you like this video in particular, be sure to hit that like button and thanks for watching.